Wrath of Kronos is a mod made for Hex and Beyond Heretic, which adds a necromancer class and also improves the other classes in the game dramatically. The mod also works for other Doom Engine games like Doom, Doom 2, Heretic, and Strife. The mod was originally made for Hexen though, and it's the best fit there. It also looks great in Heretic. In Doom it's still fun, but it doesn't fit in as well due to Doom being a sci-fi game. In any case, it can be set up to work for all of these games, which is great for replay value. You can take the same mod and transform several classic games into fun necromancer games. I'll begin by discussing the changes the mod introduces, then I'll explain how to install it for Hexen, Heretic and Doom, as well as show you where to get the mod. If you want to skip ahead to the installation, please check the video description for timestamps. Vanilla Hexen only has the Fighter, Cleric and Mage classes. Ruff of Kronos adds the Hunter and the Necromancer classes. The mod also adds attributes, a skill system, leveling up as well as specialization paths. It also adds an alchemy system, which I haven't had that much success with, as well as some other systems like artifacts. Artifacts are special items that can be equipped and it also adds gold which can be looted from dead enemies and used to purchase equipment and other items with. In other words, it transforms Hexen from a dark fantasy first person shooter into something more like a dark fantasy first person shooter with role playing elements. The game is much better with the Wrath of Kronos mod. So let's take a look at the Necromancer. You begin with a sickle and a single skill point. You can access the skills via the Wrath of Kronos menu, then go down to the skills section. Here you can select the skills you want and invest the point. There's lots of skills available, and you can see on the right the progression for the skills. Some of the skills have prerequisites. The skills I'll be covering will be the minion skills, but there's also other skills available for some direct damage like poison blobs and dark bolts, stuff like that, as well as debuffs. For a minion build, the first skill you'll want is the shadow. The shadow is a very good minion and attacks by throwing some kind of magic blob at enemies. The AI is a bit manic and likes to run around everywhere like a madman, but in combat it's on point and he's pretty accurate with his magic blobs. His weakness is close quarters. He can't shoot while he's being hit and will die quickly if surrounded. As you invest more points into the shadow skill, the shadow will get more and more powerful and also begin to use his darkness ability. The darkness is a black blob that bounces around on walls and rebounds everywhere, and it damages all enemies it touches. After you've invested 7 points into other necromancy skills, like the shadows or the dark bolts or whatever, you'll unlock the ghoul minion. The ghoul is a melee attacker and has a charge ability to help him close the distance to his targets more easily. The charge also seems to allow him to hit enemies in the air, but the other ways couldn't hit. As far as damage per second is concerned, he probably does less overall damage than the shadow, but it's valuable to have him there beating people's chins and stepping up to their faces. Investing more points into the ghoul skill will make the ghoul more powerful and also give him the poison over ability. The ghoul works quite well as a tank. After you've invested 14 points into necromancy skills, you'll unlock the revenant minion. This guy is a huge dark skeleton which likes to shoot slow, powerful magic blasts at enemies. He's also very comfortable in melee, and will do the occasional beatdown if someone gets too close to him. He's a nice addition to the ranks, and pulls his weight really well. For every point invested into the Revenant, the more powerful he becomes, and he also gets the Bone Shower spell, which rains down shards of bone onto enemies. The Death Knight is one of the strongest minions you can get, he walks around blasting enemies with very powerful magic, and also enjoys hacking them to pieces up close with his sword. There's not too much to say about him, aside from him being awesome. With each point invested into the Death Knight, he'll become stronger, and so will the Metamorph skill, if you choose that later. The Metamorph skill transforms you into a demon. The final minion ability in the tree is called Raise Dead. This awesome spell will raise any corpse you target into a permanent minion. The dead raised seem to be a copy of the creature, which makes sense. Unlike your other minions, they get left behind easily because you can't teleport them to you. 
With the usual minions, you can just press the skill key again and it will teleport them to you if they're already out on the field. Because you're not able to teleport the minions like this, they're likely to get caught behind weird terrain features and stay there. Either way, it's very cool. The minions from Raised Dead also persist once you leave the area, unlike your other minions that have to be recast when you change areas. Upgrading the skill will increase its range and also the amount of monsters resurrected. There's a lot of other skills and abilities that the Wrath of Kronos mod offers. I've only covered the minion ones, but there's a lot there if you're into your sort of dark magic necromancer kind of thing. Plenty of damage skills, plenty of debuffs, so you should be happy. Once your necromancer levels up enough, you'll be able to choose a path. The best path for minions is the Kundra path. The benefits of this path are that every time a minion dies, you'll be refunded 50% of its mana cost. In addition to this, any creature killed by the necromancer or his summons has a chance to respawn as a zombie. The zombie is a tough little timed minion, and although he won't last long, he does help out in the crazy fights. The final benefit is called Unholy Infusion. It lets each of your minions provide a nice passive buff to the necromancer. A shadow will make the necromancer become ghost-like, although I'm not sure what in-game effect this has. I haven't been able to tell. A ghoul reduces the damage taken by 15%. A Revenant increases your speed by 15%, and a Death Knight increases your damage by 15%. The other paths available to the Necromancer are the Plague Bringer, which is all about buffing and improving the poison spells, and the Harvester, which is all about vampirism and life leeching. It's also worth discussing the Cleric, because it has a dark line of skills that permit it to curse enemies and summon allies. The first ability in the Cleric's line of dark magic is the Curse ability. Curse will paralyze your enemy for a duration, so you can whack it to death with your mace. If the afflicted enemy dies before the Curse's duration is up, the Curse will spread to a nearby enemy for the remainder of its duration. Curse is a very good spell, and it can be thrown down on many enemies. Dumping more skill points into the skill increases its duration, as well as the duration of your wraiths. After Curse, the next ability is Wraiths. This will cause an angry flying spirit to hunt down enemies and attack them. The spirit is short-lived, but because it can fly, it can be used to reach enemies that you otherwise couldn't harm, like flying creatures. With many points invested, the Wraiths spawn in bunches. This makes it very easy to overwhelm enemies with Wraiths. The Wraiths also deal a lot of damage. The next minion ability is Summon Legend, which creates a Ghost Warrior of some kind. This Ghost Warrior is a capable fighter, and also makes use of rapid fire green blob attacks. He's a timed minion, but with the correct path he'll become a permanent one. The more points you put into the skill, the more health the minion gets, and also the longer his duration is. Although as I said before, the duration part isn't a consideration if you choose the correct path later on. The final minion ability for the Cleric is called Visions. It allows you to temporarily convert an enemy to your side. Once the duration is complete, the enemy will die. There's only a chance that the spell will work, and I haven't had many opportunities to use it, so I'm not really certain how good it is. Investing more points into the skill increases the chance that the spell will take hold, as well as its duration. When a path choice is made available to you, the best path for minions is the Oracle Path. It makes the Summon Legend a permanent minion, and also improves it in other ways. It also makes your Vision spell an Area of Effect spell, and it causes enemies that are afflicted by Curse to explode when they die. Aside from the Oracle Path, there's also the Inquisitor Path, which seems to benefit melee clerics, and the Purifier Path that's all about healing. Wrath of Kronos is an absolutely fantastic mod, I'm really happy with it, I've had a lot of fun with it. I'm going to score it a 9.4 out of 10 for its minion mechanics. It just makes Hex and Heretic and all these games so much better. Now we come to the installation part. To install this mod, you need to find a reliable host and download it from there. At the time of this recording, I know of a host. A website called allfearthesentinel.net has the mod, but if you're watching this in the future, it may no longer be there. Please check the video description for the link.
The first file you need is the latest RAF of Kronos PK3 file. For me, this is RAF of Kronos version 2.2.pk3. If you're installing the mod for Hexen, this is the only file you'll need. There's two patches you need to make it work with a non-Hexen game. The first file you need is the RAF of Kronos not Hexen patch.pk3 file. The second file you need to make it work with the non-Hexen game is a patch specific for the game itself. For Doom, this is the RAF of Kronos version 2.2 Doom patch. And for Heretic, this is the RAF of Kronos version 2.2 Heretic patch. After you've downloaded these files, you'll now require GZ Doom. GZ Doom is a port of the Doom engine that makes it work nicely on modern systems. Now I know this is all pretty confusing, but that's why I'm now going to give you a demonstration on how to set up this mod with these games. Hey guys, alright, it's time to show you how to install this mod. There's not really all that much information out there on how to get these mods installed, so that's why I figured I'd show you guys. I had to figure it out from digging through forums and watching various videos and whatnot. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you've got the relevant files downloaded. Most importantly you need the RAF of Kronos PK3. Then you also need the patches for the games you want to install and also the not hexen patch if you want to install RAF of Kronos for a game that's not hexen. For example Doom, Heretic or Strife. The next thing you need is you need to go to wherever your normal game is installed and you need to find the WAD file and you need to copy this out and put it somewhere else. The WAD file this is a file which contains all the assets, all the assets, sorry, programming and whatever else that's needed to run the game. If you open up these files you can see all the textures and stuff inside them. It's pretty interesting. But aside from that once you've got the WOD and you've got your RAF of Kronos, Kronos files, the next thing you need to do is you just need to make a folder. It doesn't matter where it is. I'm going to call it RAF of Kronos Hexen. I'll do Hexen first because it's the simplest. Then what you need to do is you need to extract all of the GZ Doom files into that. Then once that's done, what you need to do is you need to copy the WAD, put it inside there. So what we've got now is we've got the Doom Engine port and we've got the game file together. Then what we need to do is we need to copy the RAF of Kronos PK3 file and put it in there as well. Then what we need to do is we need to start GZ Doom with this mod file and this WOD file. And how the easiest way to do that is to create a batch file. I'll call it run chronos.bat. Then what you need to do is you need to edit it and you need to type gz doom dash file and here you list the pk3 files all separated by a space for hexen we just have one file raf of chronos version 2.2 pk3 and then you just have to tell it what iwod to use so you write dash iwod and then you type in hexen dot wad and you save that and then if you run this it will start gz doom with the mod and the correct wad file so let's run it see if it works yep it's working so now the game has started with the mod as you can see you've got the necromancer class and the hunter here what you do need to do though, is before you get carried away playing the game, you need to customize the controls and set it up so that it works like a modern shooter. So for example, 
I set use to be E, move forward to be W, backward S, strafe left A, strafe right D. Jump, I want it to be space. Crouch, I want it to be C. Um, swim up and swim down is a bit difficult. Never mind that. Uh, that's about it. Finally, we need to set up the Wrath of Kronos, Kronos keys. So for the menu, what I like to set is the letter M. For the first skill, I like to use R. Second skill, T. Third skill, Y. Fourth skill, U. This can be whatever you want. It's just where my fingers find it easiest. And for the best healing item, I set it to be H. And that's that for the controls. The next thing you want to do is you want to set <clears throat> the uh, mouse look to always on. What this means is that when you move your mouse, the camera will look wherever you're moving the mouse to. This is something that all modern shooters have, but old shooters like Doom and stuff don't have it. You used to have to press a key and then move the mouse and it would enable free look. You'd be able to move. And the default mouse functionality was that moving it around would move the character a bit, which is pretty uncomfortable and unintuitive for a modern player. So once the mouse look is done, the final thing you want to do is set up the Wrath of Kronos options. So here you can configure some things. You can change the experience multiplier you probably noticed that in my um, gameplay there, I was leveling up really fast. That's because I'd set the multiplier to 10. If you want to challenge yourself, leave it at one. If you want it to be a bit easier, raise it up so you level up faster. I don't like to lose experience on death. It's already hard enough as it is, so I turn that off. Also don't like to lose gold on death, so I also turn that off. How you set up this stuff is completely up to you. That's it for the options, now we can jump straight into the game. I'm going to choose a Necromancer. I'll make it easy for myself. Initiate. And we're in the game. Shree look is working. WSAED is working. Now we just want to press M. And we want to get our skill. And use A and D to cycle through the skills here. When you find one you want, just uh, stay with it and then press the activate button, whatever you set it up to be. For me it's E to assign a skill. Just for the fun of it, I'm going to go with Blight instead of Minions. I'm just going to shoot this idiot. There we go. Pretty good. Shoot this idiot. Take that. All right. So Hexen is working. Now let's go and set up Doom. Let's just quit out of this. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a cold. So basically, um, we want to do the same thing. And I think it's a good idea to have a different folder for it because what GZ likes to do, GZ Doom likes to do, is it likes to put all the save files in here. So I guess if you put the WADs and stuff in here as well and had the different bat files to run them, it might work, but you might end up with problems because of save files, the same name, all being dumped in here. So what I do is I come out and I make a completely separate folder for it. I just repeat the, sets, the steps. Wrath of Kronos Doom. Then what I want to do is I want to put GZ Doom in there again. So I'm just going to drag it in there. That's all in there now. Then I need the Doom Wad in there. Put the Doom Wad in. Then I need Wrath of Kronos. I need the Doom patch. And I also need the Not Hexen patch. Copy those three in there. There we go. Now the final step, 
I need the batch file. Run graph of Kronos dot batch. Yep, and then I want to fill it out. So we need GZ Doom dash file. We need to put in all our PK3 files. The first one we need is RAF of Kronos version 2.2.pk3. Then you need a space. Then you just write the new file name. It's all delimited by spaces. Uh, we need the RAF of Kronos not hexen patch dot pk3 then we need the raf of chronos version 2.2 doom patch dot pk3 then we just need the iwod which will be uh, doom dot wod that's set up now so then what we need to do is we just run this and it should work Very good. New game, yep. We've got all the Hexen classes as well as the Necromancer in there. Uh, of course, you'll have to set up all the controls again. Um, yeah, I won't put you through that. I'll just, for proof of concept, enter a new game. All right, so it is working. So that's how you set it up. I hope this helps. I hope you guys have some fun in some of these old games, which are really, really fun in my opinion. Especially now that they've got the brilliant Wrath of Kronos mod and they've got Necromancy. Have fun guys, thanks for watching. And I uh, hope you have a good weekend and I've got more Necromancy content coming your way.